already know, guys. Yes. We're back again right here on the D and D Level Up podcast. podcast. And if you don't know, now you know. That's right, guys. We got another great interview yeah, coming man. at y'all right here. Yes. You already know who's introducing this. Yes. You know. Dirk. TTMT is introducing this. Yeah, you great know. guest. King D Money. Pastor Russell Murray, a vocalist, evangelist, uh, uh, pastor, uh, um, musical icon, you know, as well as he also, are you write you're, you're writing a book, Doc? Yes. In writing midst, a book, in author as well. Writing. In the midst of writing a, a book as well, also has his own brand. Rare breed, rare breed. So he is also an entrepreneur at the same time, and uh, and also a, a business owner as well, an entrepreneur. So Doc, without any further ado, Pastor Russell Murray. Thank you. We appreciate you coming on, Doc. You're too kind. You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> so you know what we want to talk to you about? Like I kind of just discussed. You want to say something to me? No, oh, man. You're you're okay. doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> You're so, doing an awesome job. So, so what we, I think you man, appreciate that. I paid him to say that. All right. All right. <laughs> so, so I, I, got, I got you on the side, brother. Hey, man, minimum wage is taken everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Doc, I, uh, I want to I wanna find out. I want you to basically kind of give us a little expose about who you are, um, where you came from um, originally, as well as what you've been working on at the same time. So, give us a background on, on you. Man, that's a lot. That's a lot. First of all, I am appreciative and grateful to be here with you guys. Um, I'm Thank honored. You. It's a privilege. Um, humble man, humble, humble beginnings, mm -hmm. son of a pastor, yes. brother of a pastor, okay. nephew of a pastor. So it ran in the family. It was mm -hmm. something that normally you say that it was passed down or something that you say that it's almost like hereditary, um, being that that was the umbrella that I was raised under. But definitely not something that I willfully accepted. Okay. Um, yeah. Born yeah. and raised in the church, I found every reason why I shouldn't go, yeah. why I shouldn't be instrumental in the church. And so because from an early age, um, that was the mantle of the house. You're going to church, you're going to church. Yeah. So, of course, singing, being in the choir, mm -hmm. being in my first group at the age of seven, traveling. Don't laugh at the name. It was called the Gospel Galatians. <laughs> I don't gospel know. Galatians. I don't know who came Sounds up with like that. Sounds like the Ephesians. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I look back on it, but it was my my first uh, sampling of, of travel. Uh, it was my brother and three of our closest friends, and so we did a lot of local a lot of local uh, uh, engagements and events, and we sung a cappella. And so that was our first taste of, of just traveling in that sense. But always part of the choir. Uh, went on to be into other groups. Um, did some early recordings with a group called South Florida Gospel Singers. They are actually okay. big in this area now. They do a lot of traveling now. My brother is still a part of the group. Okay. Um, my cousins are a part of the group. I, here and there, join them periodically singing. Um, but so that history of singing was always there. Um, then going into songwriting, um, it was just something that I went into because it was like you're trying to express yourself, you're having thoughts, your feelings, mm -hmm. listening to different types of music. I still listen to uh, different types of music, whether it's jazz, whether it's R&B, okay. a little bit here and there. Um, you know, back in, in, in what you call your sinful days, <laughs> <laughs> I love Big Daddy Kane. Okay. Anything that had bass that shook the house when, okay. when my father was gone, those are the types of things I had. <laughs> I, I had, I had okay. four 15s in each corner oh, of the wow. room. You know what a 15 so, is? So, wow. yes, 15 inch woofer in every corner of the room. So, okay. so my neighbors would make sure they informed my father when he got home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> your your oh, son man. had a concert this evening, so. It wasn't gospel. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so those those humble beginnings, mm -hmm. and then you know, um, getting serious as I got older, getting serious in the church, and then accepting that call. Um, for me, um, it was life changing, life altering. Yeah. Um, it didn't take away my passion for music. It didn't take away my interest in in songwriting, um, but it actually gave me uh, even more motivation to do so. Um, so right now, pastoring. Um, co-pastoring along with my wife, something again that I didn't think I would do, um, but loving it, loving people, um, loving community, um, loving to see people smile, people overcome, people have victory in their life. So to me, that's that's the biggest thing. And so that's my heart's desire. 
And you guys go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I got, I got tons of you things. You on there? I got, yeah. yeah, I'm on. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I got tons of things I want to talk to. I'm about, sure God. you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> that smile on your face, Evan. <laughs> like, I, it's, I'm preloaded today. Warm up now. I'm preloaded. I'm, okay. I'm trying to ease it out. Oh, I'm trying to ease it out. Ease. ease it out. But you know one thing I want to ask you in terms of ministry? Uh, how long do you feel like um, that you were right? Because, you know, you have you know certain passions you have. I know the ministry was something that kind of was kind of invested in you over time period because your family was doing that same mm -hmm. thing. Did you feel obligation to do that? And at the same time, you you did you were running from the fact that listen, you know my pastor, my father's a pastor. I got my grandfather might be a, is a pastor. I have my brother's a pastor. So these are things that that they're like, hey, listen, did anybody put pressure on you to say, listen, uh, you know you know you next in line, so you know you know what you got to do. Um. The uh, ironic thing is, I was always uh, compelled to go to church, but never to take up the mantle of a pastor. Okay. My father never said to me that you have to pastor. He never said to me that I had to take up the mantle behind him. Okay. But his his ultimate goal was for me to stay rooted in the church. Mm -hmm. And being rooted in the church is where I got the understanding and the clarity of the mantle that is passed down from father to son because there's biblical principles that establishes it. Yeah. Um, so there was a willful going into ministry in that regard, but still not with the perspective that I'm gonna pastor a church, mm -hmm. that I'm gonna lead a congregation. Yeah. I just simply love singing in church. So it went from singing in the choir to being on the praise team, to being over the music ministry, then to going to school, then being ordained a minister, from being ordained a minister, then being ordained a youth pastor, then to actually teaching in seminary as a, a, a adjunct uh, professor okay. um, at Smith University, okay. and so it began to build that pattern of going into ministry as from a leadership standpoint, um, but still not really looking at it like I was forced to do it. Mm -hmm. But when I was ordained, my father kind of looked into it. Now, okay. like, okay, yeah. so now you've taken the steps. Yeah. To be a pastor, then he looked toward me to come to help to facilitate okay. the ministry to carry it on. But there, but pressure-wise, no, not during that time, mm -hmm. but later. Okay. Because of my my drifting from my father's church, mm -hmm. that I became um, a member of of an existing church, MEC Ministries in Pompano Beach, okay. and where I actually spent a lot of my my years, actually over 20, 20 years there wow. so at that time. ministry. Mm -hmm. And so then there was the pull for my mom and for my parents to come to help uh, with, uh, the, I don't want to call it the family church, yeah. but it was where my father had uh, founded the church. My brother is now the pastor there. And so I do go in support of them, but just the the force of taking on the mantle of ministry, I didn't, I really didn't experience it. Um, but there was always a leading or tugging toward it. And so accepting it actually took a lot of self-imposed pressure off of myself. Okay, I got you. So uh, with that being said, it has its ups and downs, it has its valleys, yeah. Yeah. it has its highs, uh, and I wouldn't change it. Did I wouldn't you, change it. Being a PK son, did you have, where was the resistance at a, was there a resistance at a certain point at, in your in your growing up? And the fact that of course that, you know, people, when people have, who's, PKs, they have a lot of pressure to be a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they tend to go all the way out. You know, they, they're the ones who usually go all the way out farther than anybody else does just because they don't want the pressure of being under that, under the leadership that they've been under, mm -hmm. or just the fact that everyone sees them as an expectation about them in certain aspects. You want to say something? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, that perception thing. I think it just looks bigger. It just looks wilder on somebody yeah. who's been in church, yeah. who's been doing mm -hmm. what, what so, quote unquote, supposed, what they're supposed to do yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, and have somebody that's guiding them. And they go, okay, well, this looks wild on me. <laughs> like, yeah. if I go outside and I see Joe Small outside and he's yeah. doing whatever he's doing, I'm like, okay, that's, that's, that's the world right here. Yeah. But, like, having that perception, I feel like it's imposed on most people. Yeah, that yeah. you're like you're you're really out there. Like you had to, you did this one thing, yeah. and you're you're crazy for that. Yeah, yeah. You, you got like your dad got to be crazy on you exactly. right now. Yeah. I think they probably like that though. So I mean, the ones who go out wild because it's like yes, because 
I want to be as far as possible from being at this responsibility because that's been placed on me or the perception that I've got to be perfect. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing is like, you already have it, this, this impetus on you like, hey, you are the pastor's son mm -hmm. or daughter and we expect you to be like the pastor. We don't expect you to make any mistakes. I haven't been a PK, so I don't know, but I'm just saying. I, I assume that's what, what, what the perception is. Was there is. any pressure to be just the, the, the idol son? Like, that's, that whole perception is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Simply because there is that belief that because you're a PK, either you're the closest thing to your dad or your parents mm -hmm. or the farthest thing from them. Yeah. So either you are going to be an angel or you're, or you're the devil incarnate. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just that that perspective. And for me personally, it wasn't that I had a uh, draw to come from you know that umbrella of the perspective of that you're a, you're a pastor's you're a pastor's son, and so that perspective that you need to preach, you need to this. It was more for me an influence from the things I felt I was sheltered from. Okay. So it was, it was okay, um, normally we, we had a routine. We're going to church, there are revivals, there are services, there are different things that you, you partake of during the course of the week. But at the same time, you're seeing your friends being involved in certain things, whether it's a game, whether it's this, whether it's that. And so you had to tug just to experience something outside of what your norm was. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not extreme, Sometimes it's just a simple event or a simple party or a simple thing that you weren't allowed to do. And yeah. sometimes because you experience that, what we would call freedom, yeah. that liberty, yeah, yeah. That, liberty <laughs> that I don't have the eyes looking at me. Yeah. So now the preconceived idea of what or who people think I am, as opposed to who I believe I am, is now it's like a, a conflict yeah. because you, you hear PK, you automatically think that this is who he is or this is who he should be. Correct. But me, knowing that, oh yes, I was raised in the church, but I'm still trying to find out who I am. Yeah. And so now I'm dealing with, with whether I am uh, an actual reincarnate of my father or I, I am who God is calling me to be opposite of what I think I am. Yeah. So I'm battling all these different things. That was That's my story. I can't speak for other PKs. But in other PKs that I've spoke with, they have kind of have the same perspective that you're you're already imposed, like you said, you're imposed with an idea yeah. of what you're supposed to mimic, what you're supposed to reflect, yeah. Yeah. and then you have your own thought of who you are, and then you got the influence of things that interest you or draws your attention, and so now you're dabbling in this and dabbling yeah. in that, and unfortunately for some, yeah. you get out so far in the deep end. Yeah. That now you it, it's difficult to reel yourself back in. Mm -hmm. Now you've lived the perception of the wild child. Mm -hmm. You live the perception of uh, Resident Evil. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. so yeah. yeah. So and it and it, it all stemmed from just a a desire to do something different, mm -hmm. to try something different, mm -hmm. and to be away from something that was so rudimentary. Yeah. It's so common to do this, something so structured, yeah. to actually feeling free. I did something that I just wanted to do. Right. Whether that was a good or bad thing, yeah. it's just having the liberty to be able to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Yo, y'all already here, okay? <laughs> you want to know what you want to know what the P, what PKs are thinking? Yeah. We got we got some insight today. Exactly. Dirt. Yeah. So you know, one thing I want to ask him about yeah. is um. Being a, not even just being a pastor, but you know, when you're on the, on the pulpit, I notice that you do relate a lot of things that are going on in current events um, to to the, the sermon sometimes that mm -hmm. that partial that kind of inform people basically about you know their regular life, which is one thing that I noticed when I first got here is that there was things that you speak about are relatable mm -hmm. to present day. How do you deal with like what's what's going on in, in society now, the P Diddy issues like? TDJ situation where you know I, you have pastors who are involved in situations like this and, and people saying well this person is attacked you know the Bible talks about that you know a certain type of fruit you know a fruit produces a certain type of tree you know a tree produces a certain type of fruit and that fruit is going to be good or bad right yeah so and you can't you're not going to be attracted to things that are not mm -hmm. godly and and then be comfortable with it 
if you are if you're supposedly godly, right? Mm -hmm. Or our expectation of a person is going to be a godly person. So when I see like Jamal Bryant uh, doing like you know maybe deciding maybe to do some a weed farm on his church or or somebody else deciding like like okay this person is hanging out a few ditty parties, what do you think as a pastor yourself, you know, in this day and age, mm -hmm. dealing with these things? What's your opinion? Well, definitely, it's imperative that you be relatable. Okay. You have to have a sense of your community. You have to have a, cons uh, a sense of even your state, your, your, your environment, your surroundings, the nation. You have to have uh, enough information to be relatable, to deal with the issues and different things that the congregation or, or the, even the community that are facing. You can't be out on an island on a platform that you're unreachable that you, you can't relate, okay. but there is a fine line yeah. because do you necessarily have to partake of it to be relatable? Yeah. And sometimes that's what happens. It's almost as if you open yourself up to some of these liberties yeah. and now you're influenced by some of the liberties that you engaged in. So it's no longer becoming about uh, being relatable to bring deliverance, hope, and, and inspirational motivation to the people you've now become so involved and engrafted in it that it becomes a part of who you are. Yeah. So now as opposed to you just ministering the word of God from a place of deliverance to people, you come, you become a hypocrite. Yeah. Because now you're actually living mm -hmm. what you're trying to deliver people from. Yeah. And I think sometimes that because we're trying to become so relatable, we open ourselves up to influences mm -hmm. that we may not have been strong enough to actually withstand. So yeah. now I'm actually you know, uh, involved in certain things that it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to pull away from. Mm -hmm. And we all know the guilty by association. Correct. So yeah. you have yeah, your, exactly. your, your <laughs> TDJ, so people that have reached celebrity status, even yeah. as ministers, yeah. men of God. Mm -hmm. And so they're invited into certain uh, spaces. Yeah. Sometimes you go for the simple fact of trying to get an understanding. Sometimes it's from a standpoint of making myself bigger. Yeah, true. Oh. Mm. A lot of people might say that they're going into those instances to minister. Let's be real. T.D. <laughs> yeah. Jakes is not going to a, a ditty party to minister to the lost within the confounds of this party. Correct. It's 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 uh, sometimes it's a strategic business decision mm, I got to you. be to be connected to people that you feel could further whatever your endeavors are. Correct. But is it composed of ministry? Yeah. It can it can look like ministry. Yeah. And that's the biggest misconception because we know truth is always exposed. Yeah. When you research truth, yeah. regardless yeah. for what yeah. angle, yeah. it's going to unearth the, the validity of what it is. Mm. And so what you're having now is a lot of people that have furthered themselves and use other influences and people and choices and relationships mm -hmm. that has furthered them to a place that now that they've become acclimated to these mm -hmm. these people yeah so now you can't separate yourself yeah so now you have a p diddy and then you have a tdj's connected to it yeah so not and all, and this is how these things uh, come about yeah. because we've opened ourselves up to be a part of these type of environments and whether people want to believe it or not spirits are transferable and when you talk about spirits, there's an element uh, of, of atmospheric, uh, let's say, proclivities yeah, yeah. That, that are there. You yeah. see something, it's incitable, it's influential, it's True. inspiring, yeah. and you can partake of that thing. Yeah. Maybe not to the far extreme that he was doing with the baby oil. <laughs> we don't know. You know, I don't know about baby, this the, baby, kind, the kind of the, the oil that we use in olive oil. oil. You know, we're using said, olive oil. He wasn't you know, annoying people with that yeah, oil. Okay. From, from, you <laughs> know, <laughs> that that was a freshly squeezed olive oil you know. from the hot presses. We're exactly. not we're not doing Johnson and Johnson, you know. <laughs> so we're not oiling anybody down. We're not lathering anybody. But but you know you you have this and and just like recently the statement that was made um, by um, Keon Henderson and the statement that he made was that blessings aren't tied to you giving to the poor. Mm. He said that the blessing or the multiplying of blessings only come through the tithe and offering. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, that's causing tremendous backlash, yeah, sure. turmoil he's, 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 within the community yeah. because there's too many scriptures that mm -hmm. actually support yeah. you giving to the poor and how it's returned back to you. Yeah. 
So this is why it's important, especially in the time and season that we're in, regardless of whether you are uh, going to church and you're submitted to a particular ministry, it's important for us to know who God is yeah. and what God is saying and how it equates to our lives. So a personal relationship has to, has to take place. And back to your question, when you're talking about all these different things that are relatable or being relatable to the congregation so that they can understand how they can overcome certain things, right. is that you don't have to become all things mm -hmm. just to be relatable. Mm -hmm. You can have yeah. a, a, an yeah. understanding or some type of introduction to it. Yeah. And for me personally, the things that I've experienced in life, mm -hmm. yes, I can talk about them from the heart. And so there are different things that I realized that I don't have to go out in the world to do mm -hmm. to be able to come back and say, I'm going to teach on this or I'm going to preach on this because yeah. I just went out and did it. Yeah. But I can get an understanding from a perspective of a person that's going through this yeah. that they, and have compassion enough to hear them, mm -hmm. to understand that they didn't get in this mm -hmm. from the standpoint, I just feel like just losing my house. Yeah. I yeah. just feel like just being a drug addict and stealing from a family. Yeah. There are some steps that happen along the way yeah that actually led them to the place that they're in. And so having a, a sermon that relates or is relatable to people, with, regardless of what condition that they're in, is vitally important because you're not preaching over their heads. You're preaching to their hearts so that they can have clarity and understanding. Can I ask you this question, Doc? Can ministry become an idol? Yep. As a matter of fact, that's actually where we are today that we've become so much reliant upon the man of God, the woman of God, the prophet, the prophets that are called to the nation. You hear that a lot. Yeah, I've been hearing, I was just talking with a, a pastor friend of mine, mm -hmm. and we keep hearing everybody that, that everybody wants to be a prophet. It's almost yeah. like mm -hmm. when when something becomes a fad, yeah, mm, everybody person. wants to now become, they see the T.D. Jake, so now I want to do a ministry like that. They yeah. see the Keon Hendersons, I want to do that. They mm -hmm. see the Jamal Bryant, I want to be that. I, as yeah. opposed to just being who God called you to be. Correct. Not everybody wants to be a prophet. Everybody wants to Ooh, prophesy yeah. and tell you what's happening and yeah. tell you what's going on. And what's what's very ironic to me is God can give you so much insight on somebody else's life yeah. and leave yours uninterrupted. Ooh. Wow. So yeah. I'm speaking prophetically what God is showing me concerning you, mm -hmm. but then my own family is, is, is in waste, and my life is, yeah. is in turmoil. I ain't talked to my mama in three weeks. Exactly. Yeah. But no, I'm I telling you, I'm telling you how, how you thing, should yeah. do about your family, yeah. about yeah. your things. So, so you're so you're you're living that now because people are drawn so much on the person that's supposed to be a representative of God, yeah. as opposed to getting to know God for themselves. Correct. My responsibility as a pastor is to teach you about God, mm -hmm. to teach you the Word of God. To inspire you to know more about God so that while I'm not preaching to you that when you're in your difficult moments in your difficult times that you can relate and you can pray and you can speak to God and have scripture to support it so that you would be have be inspired without the audience of everybody so our responsibility is to point everybody to God point everybody to Jesus point everybody to the Holy Spirit not ourselves unfortunately it's it's we're in a celebrity uh, a celebrity uh, uh, life to where everybody is whatever is popular whoever is popping they're trying to make you a god they're trying to make there pastors you go. and prophets god there, there you go and and we are we are fallible we we are imperfected there are still th different things that we have that we're dealing with but we're looked at as a person that that has it all together. You have to, you have to, yeah. when you go through this, oh, you know what, how to deal with it. There are some things we <laughs> yeah. still wrestle with. There yeah. are some things that, that we're still dealing because regardless of what level or who you are, what your title is, regardless, everybody learns something about themselves new every day. Yeah. If you take the opportunity to allow lessons to, to be reflected, you learn something about yourself every day, something that you feel you got to turn around, something you feel you got to let go. So there's nobody perfect. So if I'm not perfect, I can't expect you to be. Please yeah. don't put me on <laughs> yeah. pedestal. this, this yeah. pedestal yeah. thinking that, you know, or any pastor or any uh, prophet or any minister, placing them in a place where it's only reserved for God. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, without getting too deep, that's exactly why 
We know that the angel, Satan, or however you want to call it, bills above, we're going to call, was cast out. Yeah. Because he was at a place to where he said, I'm going to replace God. Yeah. That the glory that he's receiving, I want for myself. Yeah. And so any man or woman of God that's in a position that's not pointing you to God, they're pointing you to themselves. That is actually the spirit of the reason why mm -hmm. Satan was actually expelled from heaven. Wow. Because he wanted to be like God. the Most High God. So any pastor, any preacher, any person that's trying to replace God with themselves, you better run. Wow. You know, you know, it's interesting you should say that because sometimes it might not even be the pastor particularly doing it, but there's a cult of personality. People, mm -hmm. People like literally just kind of come around the pastor and try to like uh, do all this. You know, it's almost like hero worship. You know, mm -hmm. we got we have a lot of hero worship mm -hmm. in our society. Hero worship. Exactly. worship, 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 worship. Yeah, people that want to worship. It's some worship because the worship song. Exactly. Right. Right. They come to the church just for the worship. They're not even coming to the church for God. They just come to. to love how it sounds. Music. Yeah. I love how it sounds. They got the lights going this week. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And and that's and that's where we have to be careful. And I think that's where we're we're living now. There's a, a, a desensitizing to who God actually is, yeah. as opposed to what who and what we think God is. Mm, what yeah, what actually exactly. is experiencing the church or the move of God? What does that actually look like? And for some people, it's you got to shout, you're rolling over the floor, yeah. you, you, <laughs> your wig right. gets twisted, <laughs> yeah. you lose an eyelash or two, you right. break a nail, you fall into stuff. And, yeah, and so somebody ain't throwing a jacket at you. Exactly. There you there you go. Like, <laughs> you, you're stressed out on the exactly. floor. There you go, lathered down in oil, dripping you in your oil. eyes. And so <laughs> oh, we you, think that that's the move <laughs> of God, but yeah. If you actually know the move of God, it causes and creates change. Yeah. Oh. It makes you better. Yeah. No encounter that you can read in the Bible where a person came in contact with Jesus that they remained the same. Yeah. Something changed. If they were broken, they were mended. If they were sick, they were healed. So going into an authentic presence of God, it invokes a change. It makes you better. It gives you a solution or answer. And even if it doesn't give you the direct answer how to come out of a particular thing, it puts you on the road to un to discovering that. And that's where we have to be because you got so many manufactured presents. You got so many. Uh, 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 it's like uh, theater. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like it's like acting. You know, and and that's irritating. Yeah. yeah. Because now <laughs> you're teaching people to be something that's not authentic. Yeah. Because everybody's not gonna cry and run around the church. Yeah, so true. you think because I'm not running around that I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not loving on God. Yeah. My loving on God could be different for me. I might just stand right here mm -hmm. and I lift lift a hand and might close my eyes and you're telling me to shout, you're telling me to scream, you're telling me to do all these adjectives. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like I'm not worshiping mm -hmm. when actually I'm more closer to God than you are. Mm -hmm. Because you're looking the part. Yeah. But then if you leave here and nothing changes in your personal life, yeah. then that means that you just replicated something you saw. Mm. And and you have so many imposters now. Yeah. Uh, and so that's 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 kind of like now where we are. And unfortunately, it's popular. That was one of my biggest things as a youth, man. I used to see people, yeah, 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 the screaming, the hollering. Yeah. And I used to just, I used to stand there and be like, Lord, give me an authentic prayer. Mm -hmm. I want my prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I done seen people, you know, uh, chop around, chop around, do the feet thing. Yeah. Yeah. I done seen it all. I, seen yeah. it. I still yeah, can't do that dance. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna you gonna get a you gonna get a solid, <laughs> confident <laughs> rocking <laughs> back and forth, one leg to the other leg, but all of that. I ain't got none of that for you. Like crip walking in the yeah, church. I can't, yeah, in the church. yeah I, I can't crip walk. Hey, you know for I mean? all, all of us that love to do it, you go, that's how you pray. So that's how you get, <laughs> if, that's, if that has been proven to get you through to God, Listen. keep doing it. Don't you stop. Boy, that's it's what he tell you to. It looks, it looks like one of those Pilates exercises. <laughs> I mean, you get the music going, and everybody's, I mean, everybody's going, huh? Listen, <laughs> if that's, if that's yeah. you, if you got that going on, that, that was, was, that was my thing. I said, God, give me my own prayer. Give me my own thing to do during this, because this right here, I don't, it's just too many people doing it. Yeah. And um, I remember I was watching, uh, I was watching uh, Steve Harvey show, mm -hmm. and this lady got up and she said, "My husband and I go to church. Mm -hmm. I started going to his church, but I used to go to a Catholic church. Okay. Yeah. And he's he's yeah. a black guy. Yeah. Okay. So so we we're going we're going back we're going, we might <laughs> yeah. be going back this year. Yeah. So she's she's like, how do I get along? Mm 
Yeah. Not a lot. So yeah, yeah. I'm starting to feel out of place, and I don't mm-hmm. like that we yeah. that we can make people feel out of place it's, in yeah. church because it's a, it's almost like it's a culture. It's it's, 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 it's weird. Exactly. It's a like, like, if you norm. don't put a culture, you don't yeah. feel like you're a part, yeah. or you feel like other people yeah. right yeah. are looking at you funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we all came in here because we came short. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. We all we all yeah. woke up yeah. woke up in some type of sin this morning. Come on, let's 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 be let's rewind the tape yeah. a little bit and. The culture can be so, so, so magnetic yeah. that people go, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta be I something like it. this." If yeah. I don't, I'm looking around. Oh, I, I want to get along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we just gotta get away from the, the get along to get along. Yeah. The go along to get along mentality. Yeah, exactly. Because that's, I think, that's when we can truly start searching the Word of God mm-hmm. and finding where we need to, what we need to do, mm-hmm. in order for God to do what He needs to do through us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we start, we stop missing that. We'll be for, we'll be a lot further than what we ever thought we would be. That's right. I'm just I can't I can't just be out here copping around because you like copping around. Yeah. <laughs> Don't invite him to my church no more. There's a purpose behind yeah. it, and yeah. that's that's the difference. There should be a purpose for why you do that. Yeah. If if it doesn't have a purpose. Then it's entertainment. Yeah. If there's nothing behind it, if you're dancing because you just you feel like a you know I feel good and I just want to express myself through dance, that's fine. And everybody often talks about David. David danced out of his clothes and yeah. his wife was offended. Yeah. Okay, we we understand that. But everybody might not be or be that expressive to that extent to what they're doing what you are doing. And so if that is you, then that's fine. But when a church becomes offensive. You can't, you, you, it's funny because when we say that we're exemplifying who Jesus was, you realize the only people he actually offended were the ones that were in the church. Yeah, the exactly. ones that pretended. The Pharisees. The, the Pharisees, Sadducees, the Sadducees that got upset because he actually uh, communicated well with, with the people that they considered weren't qualified. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so whenever he dealt with those people, he dealt with them on the level. We talked about that earlier yeah. about yeah. being yeah. relatable. Yeah. And you hear people keep talking about, I don't want a platform. I'm not looking for a platform. But then they go and they make social media uh, uh, pages and they're yeah. they're going live and they're, they're doing yeah. this and that. But here's the whole point. Jesus was the biggest and, and, and the most excitable person that we talk about in the Bible. Yet everywhere he went, he used as a platform. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't him having to... I just got to preach in the synagogue or the temple. Yeah. He preached by the seaside. Yeah. He preached. He preached uh, from the ships. Yeah. So wherever he had an opportunity to share the gospel is what he created a platform for. Yeah. Unfortunately, we create a platforms because we want to be seen. Mm. And Ooh. you do have so many, so many platforms like yourself mm. that you're trying to to uplift. You're trying to motivate, to encourage, mm. to bring information, to bring knowledge to, to people, so that they could actually progress and become better yeah. and to use these things. But a lot of people use them as, a, as self-promoting. They use it for, for personal gain yeah. and the benefit. And it's the same thing. You go back to church. Now, church is, is, is a business. Yeah, is it really business, about yeah. the soul? Exactly. Are you really looking at the loss coming in? What does the loss look like? Because you can have a person that lost that comes in and they're, they're dressed, you know, not up to par, that they're, they're lacking. Yeah. Maybe they don't look like like they should look. And then you got another person that comes in dressed to the T, got the designers on, and just as lost. Yeah. Big time. So you're looking at it from yeah. a perspective of how it's supposed to look. When you, if you just simply be authentic and who God called us to be, then everybody should be able to worship together. We should be able to go to... Uh, a, a, a Catholic church and be able to lift our hands yeah. and say hallelujah if you feel it yes. or to just mm, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is yeah. and, and we should all feel comfortable regardless because we're, we're supposed to all be connected in some form in some fashion but unfortunately you got se- separated ministries and you got they call it the black church you got the white church you got the Pentecostal you got the Baptist you got the Church of God in Christ you got the Methodist you got all these different it's almost like you don't want to call them fashions, but factions. it's like they are kind of like factions. Yeah. But it's it's just it's just that that's where we are, and until we get unified to that place, then uh, we're going to keep experiencing what we're what we're experiencing now. You, you know, it's interesting you just say that because when I was, you know, I'm you know, martial artist, right? So 
in martial arts, I used to ask my teacher, I was like, why do you have Kung Fu, you got Taekwondo, you got all these other arts? The reason being is because they're all theorists, he told me. One would say, okay, I can do this. I got to figure out a way to beat you. So I have, I have to, my mindset does this. So I, in order to defeat this, this style, I got I to create my own style. It's almost like we're all supposed to be serving the same God, right? Then why do we have so? Why are we so separated on Sunday? They say it's the most racist, racist separation in, in that single day. In a weekday, in right? In that weekday. So you have people who are have been Caucasian or white, black or Hispanic or whatever. They all have. We supposedly have the same God, but then we're all. And then you know sometimes I even see some stuff like Farrakhan talks about Jesus sometimes. You know, and you have other people, other other factions. They all talking about God, but they're not all together. How, how can that actually be of God? Yeah. You got the Methodists that, mm -hmm. when you look at the root of Methodist is method. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a specific method that they felt mm -hmm. should be an operation. Mm -hmm. You got the Protestants who were a protest. protest yeah. So yeah. it's like they're protesting yeah. certain things within the church, mm -hmm. especially when it came to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. You had what they call the uh, paying of indulg indulgences, mm -hmm. where they would come in and they would, they would, you know, admit their sins, mm -hmm. and the priest would say, you know, a couple of Hail Marys and penance, would, whatever he would, a uh, dollar amount he would put on it. Mm -hmm. And this is how the, the <laughs> church actually became one of the richest within the, the religious uh, uh, specter. Yeah. Because if you look at the, the, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, look how beautiful yeah. those stained glass windows are thousands mm -hmm. upon thousands of dollars. Yeah. 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 And so they're being, you know, you had all of these different, let's go back to what you were saying. It's like every, everyone began to develop a, a defense mm -hmm. against another perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating mm -hmm. almost like a rebuttal. Yes. So I'm coming up with, with a religion or, or, or a thought process just a rebuttal. That's why you have so many people that tell about, oh, the Bible is this, the Bible is that, and the Bible was written by a man. Okay, well, what information are you reading and who was it written by? So you're using a book written by a man to discredit a book written by a man. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. you're, you're accepting Ooh, a, pers yeah. a perspective yeah. Yeah. based on your own influence and belief mm -hmm. to discount something, something else that was written. And, and that's where you find. You find that the atheist. The atheist said there is no God. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there is no God, why do you develop a perspective to defend, defend yeah. that there is, there no, is God. no God? Yeah. If there's no God, then I don't have to keep defending there's no God. Yeah. It's just like if there's no car in the garage. I don't have to keep defending there's <laughs> yeah. no car in the garage. Yeah. There is an empty garage. Yeah. So if there is no God, I don't have to develop a perspective to defend that there isn't. Yeah. As opposed to the, your whole thought is to discredit there being one. So you find everything to critique, to criticize, mm -hmm. and to uh, undermine. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what most people tend to do today. Mm -hmm. Instead of we're coming together as a people, mm -hmm. we find a reason why that we can't unite and come together. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the black community against the white community, the, the Asian community against the world, it just seems like we always find something mm -hmm. that's actually going to disrupt unity. And unfortunately, you even have that in the church. Yeah. So the Church of God in Christ is uh, upset at the Baptists because the Baptists don't speak in tongues. Yeah. You can't jump up and shout hallelujah. Hey, come on, sit down. <laughs> that usher's going to make sure. You can't yeah. get up and stand unless you're asked to stand up. And we all stand up in harmony and unity. And we all sit back down. <laughs> Hold your peace. You're a little too loud over there. Usher, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, calm down over there. You're getting too excited over there. You want to upset the spirit. There you go. There yeah. you go. And you know that he's upset. Deacon possessed. Right? Some churches are deacon possessed. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, and, and you find this in, in, every, in every in every perspective, even when you talk about car manufacturing. Everybody's building a car better than this car. So it's like everything is competition. Yeah. Everything has, has that type of mentality that I'm going to make something better than you. You're talking about government. I know we ain't going to politics, but everybody right now, yeah, even as a nation, it is, it is incredible. When I sit and think, um, everybody's got pluses for Harris, everybody's got pluses for Trump. But my perspective is, if that's the best we got to offer, then we're in a, in a situation where we are actually in trouble.
You yeah. yes. you are on the you, money. You know, that's what I was going to I was going to be like, look, yeah, dog, yeah, I yeah, say, yeah. if those are our options, yeah, exactly, we are in trouble. But at the same time, you can't have this conversation with everybody. Yeah, because yeah. everybody goes, well, that must mean you on the other side of you. You even exactly. got even it, question. It question. That's the thing. Even if you, How you question, question it, it. Yeah. yeah, you question like, it, you're, you're wrong. wrong. You're wrong. Like, you got to be on this side or this side. I say we're we're in a lot of trouble if you don't even look at. They gave you choices. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You don't. You don't even think that you you could think outside the box to get yeah. another right. choice. You yeah. don't even right. go. I, I can't have another choice. I got to pick it between right. these two. Yeah. And now I got to defend. Yeah. Why so I'm choosing. Position. I got to right. defend that position yeah. Yeah. even if I don't know it. Right. Yeah. Even right. if I've never seen this lady. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Right. Even, <laughs> I heard of Trump before. You know. Yeah. You yeah. heard of Trump. He's in the yeah. news. I I never seen her before. Uh, and right. I haven't seen her in the last three years. Yeah. But I can defend. Yeah. I can right. defend her to the T. Yeah. But why? Yeah, exactly. Right. Why? Right. why? Why are we not? That's all, this is the why thing. Why are we not asking what's up? Exactly. Yeah, this is the thing. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, one thing that I realized. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have it. Let's have it. Let's have it. Let's have it. We're right here. Yeah. We're right, right here. So, I'm so listen, you know, go. so I just got to get it out. <laughs> so, 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 listen. So, you know, you had a situation. I almost forgot what I was going to say, but I was going back to it. I got it. So I, got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So, you know, bro, you messed up. I knew it. So, I was going to so, so, get you. So, so, listen. Listen. So, listen. So, with Kamala. <laughs> you messed me up, bro. So, Kamala and Trump, right? right. So. You have you have you have two different factions, right? Mm-hmm. And you and, and obviously there's things that that I feel are negative on both sides. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I'm I'm concerned about with Kamala, for instance, her record of dealing with black men and incarceration. Mm-hmm. That's one of my issues. And one of my issues with Trump is that if he wants to start like deporting people door to door, that means he's going to have to suspend civil liberties. And if you have to suspend civil liberties, it means they can go into anybody's house. And snatch them up. Now you, you now will become a military state. So now, what choices do we have to choose from? This is this is exactly yeah. what I mean. Like yeah. both of them are giving us cho- choices that are subpar. Like, yeah. like mm-hmm. nobody's. I'm gonna be very selfish. Nobody's mentioned anything about education. Yeah. Nobody's in- mentioned anything about supporting teachers. Yeah. About supporting the youth. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody's getting into any of them. Neither yeah. one of them. Yeah. Okay, we're talking. We're talking about one evil over the other. I just I'll say it like yeah, that. The, yeah, best, exactly. the, the best, best, the best of the two, right? And we've been right. doing. We've been doing this for the last probably two, three elections. Mm-hmm. Like I want. I don't want somebody scholarly yeah. to pick from. Like at least yeah. give me the scholarly guy <laughs> yeah, exactly. and the guy that's got the bravado. At least yeah. give me that. Exactly. That's base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody that got all the all the numbers and all. Then somebody who could just you know. Swoon over other countries and make them do what they do what they what we yeah, need exactly. them to do. Give me that. Yeah, I I'd rather that. Mm-hmm. But but can we can we actually be real? Mm-hmm. Um, how much of it we're we're saying that they're supposed to present their policies, they're supposed to uh, pre- present their ideals mm-hmm. as opposed to influencing law, mm-hmm. making different things that's supposed to be better mm-hmm. for the nation. In reality, how much of it is their actual po- policy yeah. as opposed to the party's mm-hmm. policy mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the powers that, that influence yeah. them? Yeah. So how much of it is it coming from actual Harris, her thoughts, mm-hmm. her perspective, what would be better? Yeah. How much? And now if you weigh that, mm-hmm. let's look at character for a minute yeah. and the things that we've witnessed Trump do. Yeah. Do you think he's compiling yeah. policies? That's gonna be best for a nation of people of his own. Accord, yeah. yeah. Mm. So that and so now you gotta you have to look at it at a sense mm-hmm. of what powers are influencing the party itself. Yeah. So you're choosing Harris based on, okay, well, I'm a Democrat, so I'm always gonna vote Democrat. Mm-hmm. I'm Republican. Mm-hmm. And and of course I know I'm no I know I'm not the only one that has seen it and has said this, mm-hmm. that everybody chooses and they vote according to party. Yeah. Whether it is good for the nation or not, if your party don't compose it and don't come up with it, I'm not voting for it. Yeah. And that's the sense that we don't hear either candidate saying what's best for everyone. Yeah. We say what's best for a certain. And because if, if it's influenced in that regard, then you're not looking at 
the total picture. And I'm only going to say what's going to motivate the most uh, influential people, the powers that be. Yeah. And that's how they're creating these policies based on the powers of influence. Okay. That's why you have a, a, a Harris that's looking at the uh, black male incarceration almost like, well, they committed the crime. Yeah. And if the law permits me to give them this much time, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it. So the argument is, did they actually commit the crime? The, uh, the argument is, is there actually laws that actually allow her the liberty to do it? So now, is she making decisions based on the law that's afforded to her or on her vengeance toward black man? I'm just gonna incarcerate every person that commits a crime. So now, if you're not looking at the perspective of which a person makes their decisions and what is the, the most influential in them, then you're gonna make a decision based on just what you see. Mm -hmm. And again, that goes back to what we're talking about. That's why we have a very serious issue at hand. Yeah. That if these are the two people that we're lifting up, yeah. is there not anybody else yeah. Yeah. Not anybody. that that week that uh, what happened to the independent? Exactly. What, what happened, happened to the running? independent that yeah. used that used to run? Yeah. The person that gives us another option yeah. to say that listen, they might not be perfect, but what I'm looking at and the influences that, that are behind you yeah. is not something that I can set my hat on, yeah. either or. Mm -hmm. So that we're dealing with, 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 with a serious issue here mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to choose yeah. the lesser of two evils. Or mm -hmm. I'm gonna put my own name in the battle. <laughs> yeah. in a minute. Uh, they, yeah. They're gonna be like, well, I've yeah. seen somebody on that Russell. <laughs> yeah. 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 If I can write it on yeah. my own ballot, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But it's, like I said, right now we are in dire straits. You know, Dr. Umar Johnson was talking about the fact that, you know, this is what Dr. King used to do when he was when he was alive. He'd go to the president and say, "This is what I want for our people. Can you pass these this legislative through to get us this?" We don't have any person out there now who's like saying, "Okay, we don't. We're not just giving you our vote. We need something back from it." When, yes. I, when I see Obama come on. Because who do we trust? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to that's actually be that saying. spokesman. That's and that's the problem. Like I, when you see Obama go, he goes and say, "Are you going to be a black president?" No, I'm going to be the president for all people. I've seen and heard with my voice. See, look at Kamala. They ask her, "What are you going to do about black issues?" No, I'm not. I'm not going to deal with black issues. I'm only dealing with issues for the whole country. I understand that. But thing is, not identifying that black people have been disenfranchised in this country and not rectifying it. That's what bothers me because. It's just smoothed over where they're not there. I mean, if you look at Obama, Obama, his his legis at the time that he was president, his biggest thing was fixing the economy and and pushing for the LGBT movement. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. He did not specifically earmark money or things specifically for the black community just because he was black, because he didn't want to be perceived as a black president, he wanted to be a president who happened to be black and happen to, to do a certain amount of things. Mm -hmm. Now, my issue is that I don't believe in individuals just not, if you see that there's a, call, a, a, a faction or, or a consensus that black people are being red line based on the amount of, of um, income to status to, to, to whites, the poverty line, the poverty level based on how slavery has given, given our white counterparts a, a certain amount of leverage in the, in the financial realm, mm -hmm. as well as a legacy for money that's been built over time. Mm -hmm. And then by having a few doctors and basketball players and superstars, even Puffy said this, he said, I'm, we're only a certain amount, we, we're put to a certain standard, but there's only so many black billionaires. He said, we're not, we shouldn't be, this, this should not be the standard. If you have three or four and we're held account to a certain amount of things, but there's only, this is not the norm. We, there should be a norm when you look at the, the amount of counterparts of billionaires to black billionaires as opposed to other other cultures we are we are behind so having dre there having the have it have it um puffy there having um jay-z does not equate to we are accelerated beyond the place that we should be and i don't see us gaining anything just because of that my, my issue isn't that we haven't been given um money let's not say that i don't i don't like me me personally i don't think it's the money i don't think it's, it's not the money we have been not led into any positions of any type of power mm, that's what i'm talking about yeah any type of power yeah i mean you can't even be a regular human being until yeah. 100 and something years ago yeah 
and then it's still in the Constitution right still, now. It's still there. It's still in the Constitution you're right not now. Even, you're not even a human being to make up the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's get that. You're property. You still are property. You're you know, it property. hasn't been changed in the Constitution. It hasn't been changed in the Constitution. You don't you're, realize You're that. still property. Yeah. Now, property doesn't get to, um, property probably doesn't get to be a security guard. Yeah. <laughs> let alone, yeah, yeah. let alone a judge, yeah. a lawyer. Let's go up the line. Let's go up governor, yeah. a councilman, councilwoman. Yeah. Pick any of any of the the rules and regulations your community gets to go by. You haven't got to do that yeah. yet. Yeah. And then when you try to make your own town, they come and take that away. Yes, yeah, destroyed. It's destroyed. You have no right. way. And that, this is how we make the money. This is how you make the money. Exactly. You got to, in order to play the game, you got to know the rules, yeah. and you got to be able to play the game. You got to be able to be. You got to be able to be the person moving the pieces, not the pieces. Exactly. But here, here is the key. What are you willing to sacrifice for? That's true. Who's willing? Who's willing what to are on the you sword willing for that? Yeah. To actually give up. Yeah. Are you actually willing to give up your life for true. certain liberties? that should be afforded to us mm-hmm. without loss of life. Correct. Mm. When you are looking to make, especially as drastic changes mm-hmm. as it would, it would indicate, mm-hmm. unfortunately, trauma, traumatic situations always invoke a need for necessary, for necessary change. Mm-hmm. If you look at even how our nation and the fabric of our, our nations are built, Unless something dramatic, traumatic, mm-hmm. something devastating happens, mm-hmm. there's no sense mm-hmm. of, of immediate urg- um, or urgency, or urgency or, to to create the very thing that you've been you've been speaking, you've been declaring. Look at the things that in the schools, in the schools you ha- you've been having repeatedly uh, students returning to schools and they're they're killing other students, mm-hmm. and so you have you you're having a loss of life, and it has to be a loss of a certain type of life in order to actually invoke some type of change. And so when you're dealing with, with these, these different things and we're talking about um, certain liberties that we have, okay, let's, let's talk about it a minute. If your liberty infringes on my liberty, it's no longer a liberty. True. And this is what we're dealing with now. We have different factions that are coming saying that we have rights. And that's something that happened with the LGBTQ community to where they wanted to establish rights. They pushed for it. They had the power behind it. They had the money behind it. They had the prestige behind it. They had all of these influences that went in and say, this is what we want. You're going to push for it. You're going to, and guess what? They got rights. They got rights. So as, as a people, we constantly find ways to pull ourselves down. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if it's a position of power, I'm going to undermine you in order yeah. for me to get it. Ooh, and yeah. so wow. I'm talking about how a black person can't become a judge when I have a, a black person that's trying to come up and I assassinate him because I want to be the one that instead of pushing each other up to the yeah. place where we got one in there, yeah, that one, one yeah. pushes up and we got two in there. Yeah. And unfortunately, you have, you, well, fortunate and unfortunate, you see this in other communities where they will get behind one to push yeah push one out there to make sure one is in a strategic position to make way for others and and also be qualified qualified that's true don't just think that i'm supposed to get it because you owe me and and we live we live in a society that when you make it don't forget about me but i'm not going to go the way that you went to get more educated to like you said know the rules of engagement to know what i need to do to be in a better situation. No, just put me in there because I'm your brother. It's a sense put of me in there. But then you get in there if your mindset and your attitude does not change and adjust yeah. to what the climate requires, then you're going to pull this down. Exactly. And they're never going to let nobody else get back <laughs> in that position. We're, we're going to make sure that we close that door. You got in there, but you won't get nobody else in there. And so all of these different things come into play. That's why you, we have to get back to the bare roots. Yeah. Uh, first of all, integrity character we have to develop these particular principles in people so you got educated people that are nasty you got law enforcement people that are are positioned to be an asset to the community but yet they're more threatening than the person that's on the average person on the street so and it goes back to a heart thing yeah 
regardless of your color, mm -hmm. your skin, your creed, it's a heart. Yeah. And if a person does not have a heart for right, mm -hmm. then they're not going to be able to, to make decisions based on a broad, a broad umbrella of everybody. Yeah. And so once again, now they, uh, you go back to deciding by character. Yeah. We say uh, uh, Harris's character is somewhat soiled mm -hmm. because she made some outlandish uh, uh, references that she was she was African American, and they're saying that oh she's not African American, Indian. she's Indian, and she's you know all these different, and so but okay so we're gonna dis, uh, discredit her yeah. because she's not African American, but Trump isn't either. Yeah, and no he's not claiming that he is, yeah. but at the same time why would I disqualify Harris mm. for her not being an African American and supporting me and being like me, mm. but Trump isn't either. Yeah. So. We're looking at these different things to, to, to eliminate, but we're still not looking at the heart. And then you say, well, it doesn't matter the person's heart because they're not actually enforcing the policies anyway. They're just the, the face, but it's the parties, it's the, it's the commission, it's the, the senators, it's yeah. all of these people that are coming together with yeah. these plans. And I'm, I'm gonna mess y'all up just for a minute. <laughs> Have you guys ever watched the movie Distinguished Gentlemen with Eddie Murphy? Yeah, I saw that movie, it was good. And it was him being yeah. voted yeah. into the House remember, of Representatives yeah, remember, as, yeah, yeah. you know, a senator. Yeah. And just, it was a comical movie, mm. but it highlighted some of the behind the scene things that actually happened in politics. Yeah. Yeah. Where he actually won based on the recognition of a name. Mm. Mm. That yeah. he didn't even have policies. Yeah. He actually just gave them rhetoric yeah. and people recognized the name. They went into a community because there was people that voted based on his name. And they didn't even know that the, the senator had passed away. Wow. And they went right back to the communities and got the people to just, you remember you voted for him last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vote. Uh, and then his his actual model was, I forgot the name of whatever his name was, but he was like a name you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny, yeah. but it actually, yes. it highlighted what actually, actually happens it's, in politics. He got voted around. in, yeah. and then there were different people because of where he came from, the constituents that he represented, and there were there were there were uh, businesses and and different people that had that had motivations that would come and say we want to throw you a party, and we want to raise a hundred thousand dollars for you in this party or two hundred thousand dollars in this party, but we want you to remember us yeah. when these policies come up, yeah. when these laws exactly. come up. Remember exactly. us, and and we think that this nation is not a nation that's actually. Uh, and that's exactly yeah. what we're Should dealing with. That's why you have the powers that be, the money influencers. Exactly. They are dictating the things that are passed. Yeah. So again, are we really discrediting uh, Harris or Trump based on what their policies are actually going to be yeah. as opposed to the policies that they're just going to be pushed to enforce? Yeah. So, and again, we are yeah. in a crazy Do we know place. we voted for? Exactly. I mean, Did we miss the vote that actually counts? It was already voted on. We, 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 it's already voted <laughs> on. Did we miss the votes exactly. that actually count? And, and, and senators, exactly. there you go. Exactly. Exactly. Those there you there go. Did we miss those that? Are those are the people. Those are the people. Those are people who are pushing the money around. Exactly. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah when you start right. pushing that money around, you you want to know where you want to know where your, your babysitting money going. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know where where the food, where, where the stamps coming from, this, that, and the other. Yeah. You. This is this is how this the is done. Senators. You got the stakes are different. It's yep. different, and when we take the, then when we, I think Miami Gardens. I'm trying. I don't want to say Miami Gardens, but I'm saying, <laughs> like twenty percent of the people that could vote vote. Twenty percent. Wow. Twenty two million. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah. For the for for our councilwomen and councilmen and mm -hmm. and, and 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 mayors and elect and this that and the other. And we are missing the votes mm -hmm. that count. Yeah, that and we're, we're, we're all in it for like this WWE right. there you match. Go. We're all there in it for the match. match. Yeah. The big, the big, the, 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 the big one. Yeah. The big one. You've yeah. not seen the small yeah. battle mm -hmm. at the bottom. What actually yeah. affects your community. Yeah. yeah. You know? and, and get things done that's closest to you, exactly. that affects you personally. Exactly. And again, because the light's not shined on that. There, yeah. There's no big fanfare. There's no touring of the nation. Yeah. There's no all of this this humble all this stuff that's going on but the highlight is on the president so you miss the count the votes that counted that's going to actually reflect what you need in your individual community so now we're focused on and we're fighting about kamala we're fighting about donald trump and this is what we're doing back and forth back and forth 
and we don't even see the bigger picture is actually the things in the small print it was the things yeah. that's that's the, the catch clauses yeah but we're looking at the big things and we're fighting each other over it the church is fighting because <laughs> yeah. you got pastors and bishops and everybody's prophesying it's just like i was just seeing over um on facebook all the prophets that are prophesying storms or hurricanes to come during a hurricane season, that <laughs> is actually common sense. Yeah. That yeah. whenever there is a hurricane season, the possibility of actually experiencing a hurricane is almost like eighty-five to ninety percent. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So you but, hear about global warming, and global yeah. warming brings about storms. And, and now you prophesy that there's going to be a storm. Prophesy something else. Something else. Prophesy something else. Prophesy something that's the yeah. unusual. Yeah. There you go. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, if you yeah. can do like Moses, ain't never seen a day of rain. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. call it. And yeah. Call it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Step your like, rain. We ain't never seen that. Call yeah. that. Call that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and y'all might be mad at me for saying Ooh. this. But actually go out there and stand in the middle of a storm and tell it to be quiet. <laughs> Or stand on top of the water like crypto yeah, 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 you go out there. Go, out, go, go there. out there and you can be on the news. They're going to show you about the tall stall to and fro. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, it was, it was the prophet that stood out there in the midst of the storm and declared, I don't, well, we don't know what he was saying. We just knew he took off in the air. And we're still trying to find out where he is to this day. You don't know. They don't know where he is. But, and, and that's the reality of what we are. And again, it goes back to the heart. It goes back to the heart. And if we don't really get back into what a person's heart is, the Bible says that a man's, his heart is desperately wicked. Oh, Who wow. can know it? Yeah. There's so many different things that why, why we want to be certain things, why we want to do certain things. And most of it hinges off, okay, first thing is I want it for me, and then I want it for my family, which is not a horrible thing. It depends on what it is. Yeah. It depend, depends on the motivations after that. Because many people, I'm sure when we talk about puppies, I'm sure he wanted to have for his family. I'm sure he wanted the fanfare. I'm sure he wanted his name and likes. I'm sure he wanted the fame. But how far are you willing to go after having accomplished all of that? Yeah. And it, it's sad because when a person gets to a place where they've met everything that they could ever aspire to, mm -hmm. what motivates me now? Yeah. And the next thing is when I got the finance, I got the stability. I got the foundation. My family's good. We're, we're, we, I can buy what I want. I can go where I want. I can do all these different things. What's the next thing I want? And that's control. control. Oh. It's the private. I want power. Yeah. I want authority yeah. to take my finances and be able to make you do what I want you to do mm. based on that. And that's what happens next. And that's what you start to see, mm. that these different celebrities, they get to a, a, a certain status. Mm. What's next? Okay, you got the the best selling uh, album and song, and you can. Okay, what comes with that? Yeah. I want the influence now. I want to be able to dictate and control. Now I want when you go to sleep, you think of me. You wake up, you think of me. Yeah. And how do you get that? There are certain things that you begin to, you know, devil in, mm -hmm. just in order to have those things. And unfortunately, what you do in secret eventually comes to light. Yeah. And a lot of these people that that contributed, I know we talk about Diddy, y'all, but a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of these different things that's coming to light now that they're exposing, that they're locking him up for, ridiculing him for, a lot of people saw that for years. A lot of people thought it was okay. Same thing with R. Kelly. Yeah. A lot of people accommodated it because a lot of money was spread over, or a lot of attention, and I got to experience these different things. Yes, it was morally wrong, and I didn't do it myself, but I actually help participate or set it up mm -hmm. so I had knowledge of it so now that he's in trouble mm -hmm. let me go ahead and tell you know yeah, exactly and so now mm -hmm. it's self-preservation yeah and it's the same thing that's happening now mm -hmm. but at the same time go back it's the heart of a person yeah. when your heart be, uh, gets hardened mm -hmm. and cold there's nothing that you no longer will resist mm -hmm. you open yourself up to do do anything mm -hmm. and it's it pride pride is gone uh, dignity is gone. You lost morals years ago. Yeah. So <laughs> now it's, it's and, and you had Epstein. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. You, it, it's that power. It's that. It's that. And that's why the Bible talks about the love of money is the root of all evil. Didn't say money. It okay. said the love of it because now I'll do anything to get it. Once I got it, now I'm gonna make you do anything to get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just it's just a flip of the script. Flipping the script, all right. Yeah. I think I think this is one this is one of the better interviews. Yeah, man. This is dope, man. This is oh yo. Yo, the, the podcast after this podcast? 
<laughs> after the light, after the lights, after the lights turn off, y'all, it's gonna be crazy. Dark, you got any more questions for you? I do, bro. You, you okay, know, but you know, we can still got some more time. Uh, we, we very limited on time, but we can work on it. <laughs> Listen, we can work with it. Okay, I got a God question for you. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. oh, so I know him, but I, I have <laughs> seen him. You know. <laughs> I got a God question for you. Yes, sir. So one of my questions is, is that um, how do you how do how do you deal with the fact? That God, like this is one thing I was, I was, I think I was talking to you about this earlier one time, is that God is perfect, right? How is it really? You have, you know, we have what is called free moral agency, which means we have the cho- the choice to choose whether we want to do good or want to do evil, right? Choose God or you choose Satan, or, mm-hmm. you know. So you have a situation where, like, my experience is that you really can't. Do you really have a choice? If I say to you, I'm gonna give you an apple, I'm gonna give you a snake. Now, if I don't do what you tell me to do, you won't get the apple. You'll get the snake. How am I really? How am I really? Have, how do I really have a choice? Do I have a really? Do I really have a choice in choosing God, or choosing evil, or is it because of how I was born in sin? I'm just choosing what's natural because of what was been brought down to me. See if you can give me a little uh, 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 answer. To that. Oh man, that's that's why. But the first thing I want to say to you is I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask both of you a question. Okay. What is the greatest power? God. Right? Or choice, right? Or will. Is it will? What do you I'm say? Thinking so? will. Okay. First thing comes to my mind, serving God. Freedom. Mm. Okay. Freedom or the liberty to do what one decides or chooses to do. Yeah. That's the greatest power greatest power is to have that ability now when the bible says that we were made in god's image and after his likeness what did he do he gave man the ability to have instruction from him to have his own ideology own thoughts but also be able to comprehend another influence so you had three di- you got three different influences that are created in our dynamic you have god's purpose and plan you have your own, and then you have an influence of, of something, whether you want to call it a devil, whether you want to call it Satan, but there is an entity that does not want you, number one, to operate in the freedom that you have been given or glorify God. Yeah. Well, you know, this this is the, this is what I want to get down to. This is one thing that that is a question that I have, always had a concern. So we're made in the image of God, so we are like God, right? Mm-hmm. Now... It's almost like the devil, the, the angels, they weren't children because you're, you're going to deal with your children differently than you deal with people who are the servants, right? You know I'm getting ready to mess you up, right? <laughs> go, ahead. I'm gonna, go ahead. Before you go there, <laughs> okay, go let ahead. me ask you a question. Uh-huh. What instructions did God give man when he created him? To be fruitful and multiply. And? And to populate the earth, right? And have dominion. And, and have, have dominion, dominion. have dominion over all the... All when the did he say, obey me and do what I say? Mm. Mm. It's true. Yeah, I never heard that. But he did. Did he, not, did he say you should follow his commands? He never did say. When? No, when did he say? When? That? When yeah. did he say that? Because true, right? when he created man, yeah, the Bible says he made us in his image and after his likeness. Mm. He positioned us in a place where we know is the Garden of Eden. He gave man an instruction. He created. The Bible says that he pulled man from the dust of the earth. He created man from the very thing he was going to create everything from, which he drew the animals from. He drew all the trees, the herbs, everything was from the same ground that he told man to now have authority and dominion over. He said, have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl, the earth, all these different things. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Then he said, there's a tree that's in the midst of the garden that you can, well, two trees. First one, he identifies the tree of life that you can eat freely from. But he said, of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, that is the tree that I don't want you to eat from. Why do I not want you to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Because I don't want you to think or know there is a perspective other than mine and yours. Mm. Now, but this is- Because I remember, yeah. I'm made in his yeah. image yeah. after his likeness. So Adam, the Bible says that, God brought all of the creatures to Adam, everything he created, and he said, whatsoever Adam called them was the name thereof. 
So Adam operated in the ability of God because he was made in his image. And it only changed when Adam realized there's a third opinion. Yeah. And this will, this will bother me. Someone like this, Doc. So for instance, you got a, you got a, uh, a Rottweiler in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the backyard, chained mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Don't touch the dog mm -hmm. or he will bite you. Mm -hmm. Now, because you walk by that dog every single day, you're in there doing things, he looks like he's peaceful. Mm -hmm. Human nature, God knows, see, there's one thing I saw in the scripture that says that God created us for us to worship. One of the reasons why he created us, to worship him. And all things really either worship him or, wor or worship the enemy, right? So what concerns me is that God knew, say he knew you before, right? Mm -hmm. So he knew all of this was going to happen and all of this is for his glory. Now, it seemed, and, and I'm not saying this to sound, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, non-religious or what, because I believe in God. But I, mm -hmm. I'm thinking in my mindset, for other people who don't believe in God, who don't have an understanding of who God is and the concept of God, I'm just being plain advocate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in this possible, if he created all this, he saw all this, why even have it in the first place? Because it's all, God can see all the suffering and all the all the peace, all the good things, as well as all this. Why even have this exist? Is it only for the glory of God? Okay. And why? What's the greatest pleasure that you would have in any relationship is a person that's in love with you of their own free will. Yeah. Not a person you made to love you. Correct. Even though you want the person to love you, you can give the person every reason to love you but you still can't force that person to love you. So the ultimate thing in what God has created is the fact that I created it to make a choice and decision whether to worship me or not. But I, of course I wanted to. And when it does, that's the greatest admiration. That's the greatest honor. That's something that was created in and of itself to be different if it so chooses to, but to actually give me back that worship. Think about it. Every inventor, every person that has to create the ability to create a thing, wants it to be honorable, wants it to bring them glory and acclaim. We're doing this podcast um, in and of ourselves, of course, to, to influence and to, to inspire. But at the same time, when it's recognized and people begin to receive from it and they begin to, to experience what it is that you're implementing, then it brings the podcast glory and honor. And so if the podcast goes and it goes global and it goes viral and it, and it expands, guess what? The creators of it are, are receiving that. And that's and that, it's the same thing when you look in the element that God created. Of course, he could just say, what's going to be, and I knew you were going to mess up, so I'm just not going to create you. But that wasn't the heart of God. The Bible says that he loved so much that he gave. And that's the whole heart that God created from, his, from himself to bring into existence what he thought. Now watch this. He wouldn't be God if he created something that did not have the ability to do something aside from him. Because then he, he didn't create, create us as robots. You, you think that he could not have created us to just zap us and just everything we do would always just be exactly what he said for us to do. True. How he said for us to do it. But the infinite wisdom, the infinite wisdom of God is that everything has its place. It has a certain time. We know that God is not composed of time. He is eternity. And so what that means is we, we live our lives based on the past and the here and now. Our hope and our faith is in the actual future. But our, our greatest influences come from what we've experienced, what we've gone through, and what we are currently now experiencing. Now, from a level of God, he saw the past, he see the present, and he see the future, all at the same time. And so when he's comprised of that, what we're asking God for, if it's not in line with what he saw for us, we don't get it. Even though I desire it. Yeah. Even though I want it. And, and I know we teach this. We say you have what you say. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. But if you really compose, did you ever, did you get every desire that you ever had? Ooh, every did you get them? 
We say God said that He's gonna give us the desires of our heart. The first person, the first thing He said, He said, delight yourself in Him. He also said, not not for us to lean to our own under understanding and all our ways acknowledge Him, and He directs, He governs. So my desires, and that's what we have to be careful of. Just because you compiled a desire based on what you saw, an interpretation of who you think you are and what you think you should manage, I'm praying for that. I'm asking God for that. When that don't happen, I get mad. <laughs> yes, it's true. Because yeah. I've actually conspired within myself that I want to be a millionaire. I'm bad with money. I don't know how to budget. <laughs> and if and if my mindset is remains the same, I, I'll be broke probably about five years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm not asking from a standpoint of what I prepared myself to possess. Mm -hmm. I'm asking from a, a standpoint of what I desire because I saw what what could happen. I, I'll be able to buy a car that I want because you know what I I, I got a dream car yeah. or you know I got a dream house or you know that I want to dress a particular way. I want to have certain things. So that's what I'm basing what I should own and possess mm -hmm. off of what I desire for myself. But it has nothing to do with what I've been created for. Mm, yeah. So now, if the, the will of God is perfect, it's timely. And it's essential to the abilities and the talents that he gave me. Unfortunately, we're, we, are, we live in a society where I make a determination on what a person is based on what I see. Where I have a, um, a insight, a, a, vis a, a visible sight which means that it's, it, I'm looking at, what I look at is what it is, but I can't see the internal. So if a person is without, we automatically said that that person doesn't have the capacity for it because I'm basing it off they don't have, but you can meet people that have not come to a place to think it was necessary to possess a certain thing. So like an entrepreneur, they become an entrepreneur when they decide I don't want to work with someone and I want to, but, they work for people and you don't think they got the capacity to be an entrepreneur. They just did not come into the understanding of that's what they want to handle or possess. That's what they want to become. Now everything shifts. So we look at a person from what they are right now. How do you know when you actually met a person that you're divinely connected to or your wife or, or your spouse? It's that they don't look at where you are. They can see the potential in you. Mm, they wow. can see that just because you don't have it now does not mean that you'll never get it. True. And that's how people base relationships on. I don't. I want a person that has this. I want a person that does that. I want a person that's like this. And that's what we want. Mm -hmm. But a person that's actually a helpmate mm -hmm. is a person that actually can see that he may not have it now. Maybe it's because he don't want it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe because he was never with a person or she was never with a person that may can, you know, require a certain thing. So your standard comes up based on the connection that you make. It's the same thing in God. When we're in him, our standard of living, our expectation begins to rise because he wants us not just to serve him, to do what he says. He wants us to love each other. He wants us to have compassion for each other. He wants us to support each other, be kind and give to each other so that we all can, can uh, live a certain life of, of, of luxuries, if, if you want to call it that. But again, it gets back to God sees everything and he perfects everything within us. Everything that I actually need to begin the journey for the things that, that, that bring success in my life, he's already given me to start. I might come into contact with other people that help shape and mold different things, my understanding, my clarity. I get knowledgeable about certain things. I understand now how to do certain things and it causes successes in my life. But the comprehension was already given to me. Mm. Mm. The understanding is already, the ability to understand has already been given to me. It's just now what I open myself up to. And so, and it's the same thing when we talk about God. Yes, we, we look at it like, okay, well, God is so controlling and dictating. No, he tells you what his will is. But the beautiful thing about God is he never tells you the whole plan at one time. Yeah. That's do it. He gives you <laughs> yeah. step by step. Yeah. Because think about it. If he did, yeah. we just do whatever we felt like doing. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to that certain point. Okay, now I'm going to flip. Yeah, yeah. But every every day is a walk. Every day is a day by faith. And that's what faith is. It's yeah. something of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We believe in a God that we have not physically ever touched, let alone seen. Yeah. That answers a lot of stuff for me.
inside the model prayer. Mm-hmm. Say, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. He didn't say, he didn't say, yeah. give me bread for the next 40 years. Yeah. He didn't say, give me the strength for the next 50 mm-hmm. or, 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 the, or the next four battles I'm going to have after this. He said, <laughs> yeah, today. Just today. You want to win this Just, one. Just want to win today. this one. Yeah. Yeah. I want to win this one. And maybe that's that's the perspective that we need. We need to win this one. We need yeah. to win today. Yeah, yeah. And I think we won today. Yeah. Right here on the D and D Level Up Podcast. And, and if you, you don't know, know now, now you know. know. That's right, guys. Hey guys, we got our our brand new product, the YouTube. The Ultimate YouTube Marketing Guide ebook. I want you guys to click down in the subscription. This is going to give you impactful information. That's you know, cool. I've gotten so many different um, ebooks from different people, and it's basically it's basic stuff. This goes from basic to intermediate to advanced. You've never done YouTube marketing before. This is the jam. I want you guys to go check it out. It's very, it's for oh, it's, I'm completely giving this away, bro. I've discounted seventy percent. Woo! Right? That's big, bro. We got to talk out the pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 70%? 70% off. Limited time only. Listen, I put a whole bunch of work into this. A lot of times when people give you ebooks, they don't really give you that much resources. They give you a certain amount of things, and it's just enough to get you to go ahead and buy another product. But I didn't want to do this with this product. I wanted actual people to actually get something out of it. Value, so, baby. Value. Let's go. And once you look at it and you see the, the aspects, I put 30 lessons in here. So I put a lot of hard work into this. Go ahead and check it out. The link's in the description. Go and get it. Deuces. Deuces.